Hello, I'm Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the Loss Prevention News Network. We're here today with Steve Eppolito, Director of Loss Prevention at Talbots and Chair of the NFLP Content Planning Committee. Steve, who's been with Talbots for over 27 years, has been a member of the NRF's LP Advisory Council for over five years and assumed the Chair position of the Content Planning Committee just last year. We also have with us Gary Johnson, the Vice President of Loss Prevention for the Vitamin Shop and former Chair of the NRF's LP Advisory Council. As part of the NRF's LP Advisory Council, Steve and Gary and 25 of their fellow colleagues volunteer their time to help develop and steer the various committees that drive value for this industry and keep us all focused on the bigger picture. We'll be speaking with the chairs from five of these committees today, and we thought it was important to start with Steve and Gary's first, as the biggest task that truly impacts all of the attendees is the actual content delivered here at the show. With that, I'd like to thank Steve and Gary for being here. Thank you, Gus. Steve, if you could tell us a little bit about the content planning committee, the, the size of it, who sits on it, and, and explain the year-long process involved, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, and it is a year-long process. <laughs> uh, it, this thing uh, starts in uh, September. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as uh, who is on it, uh, there are NRF members, obviously, mm -hmm. um, members from the advisory council. Mm -hmm. And then also we uh, invite some seasoned professionals in the LP industry to come in and talk to us mm -hmm. and, and let us know what their thoughts on what the content should actually be mm -hmm. but the whole day starts um, and there's there's different segments of it the first piece of it is we have to look at what we did last year what was the last conference what was good the bad and sometimes the ugly mm -hmm. uh, and we need to make sure that we build on that good we tweak the bad and the ugly we're going to throw away <laughs> because we have to learn everybody yeah, sure. learns um, then the other piece of it that is uh, very vital to the conference is what's hot? What is going on in the industry right now that uh, everybody needs to know and needs to learn from? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you got to be very passionate about that, that type of thing. And then you can't steer away from the staple items mm -hmm. that when we put the content together, we want to be sure that um, not only is it the hot items, but you know when you talk about shrink and you talk about ORC, that's part of our lives. Our it's daily always lives. the basics. It's always the basics. Right, you right. always got to make sure you touch the basics, but we also have to look at what's obviously very hot. The other piece of it that is very important is we've got a very diverse crowd and very diverse uh, attendees out there. Mm -hmm. So you've got your corporate environment. Um, and then you've also got your field environment and everybody in between. Mm -hmm. So we got to make sure that we're delivering that content to everybody so mm -hmm. that, um, you know, some of these larger companies that bring uh, several people here, mm -hmm. um, that those people are going to be obviously uh, very educated in, in the content. Um, we then take that information and then we've got to divide it up and we've got to assign it to uh, some of the council members who then will then go out and get speakers because mm -hmm. that's the other piece of this whole piece. Yeah, now we were going to ask how do you select them, how do you come up with them, volunteers, whatever. Yeah, yeah and, and that is a, that's a very uh, uh, a large process because mm -hmm. once we come up with the topics, we solicit all of the, um, the topics from uh, the community. Uh, the NRF does a great job of of uh, putting that survey out there on what do you want to talk about, what do you want to hear. It, and who, who does the survey go to, if I may ask? It actually is on the website, and anybody can do it. We, we publish it. It's there. Okay. Anybody could submit a submission that they would like to, to hear and also give us some um, uh, speakers that would be good for that, sure, uh, sure. For that topic. So uh, we take all that information, and that is given out. We then go after it. Then mm -hmm. we have to go out and develop those um, 
uh, those pieces and that content. So um, again, it starts uh, starts in September and it ends with uh, uh, obviously the best show in the industry. There you go. Yeah. You know, for years, the, the conference was Monday through Wednesday, and, and a couple of years ago, it changed to Wednesday through Friday. Could you explain that change and, the, and what went on behind it? Yeah, and um, there was a lot of talk about that, and again, uh, the NRF did a great job in surveying not only the attendees, but also uh, the vendor population. And when you're here Monday through Wednesday, mm -hmm. that means people, uh, the attendees, have to travel. They have to travel on a weekend. Um, if you're coming here for uh, maybe an event prior to the NRF, a golf event or any type of meeting event, that means you're going to leave on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And you're, we don't want to take away from family life because these professionals out there travel enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so we took that into account and everybody felt that if we move it, then we would only have to travel on the Monday or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, the other piece of it is the vendor piece of it that uh, obviously they have to set up their booths mm -hmm. and if they have to set them up over the weekend, it's a, a rather larger expense obviously because right. of the overtime rate. So they were all for it too. And what's nice about it too is that um, the uh, the LP people can visit stores on mm -hmm. the Monday and the Tuesday if they're not doing something and make a week of it, but also still have time to uh, attend the conference. Mm -hmm. Gary, as the former chair and council member for many years, how would you describe the, the conference's evolution and in, in the group and how the content and the group has evolved? Can you talk to that? Sure, for? thanks. Great question. Um, you know, over the years, and I think my first conference was in 1986, so I'll, I'll tell you the first thing I've noticed, quite frankly, is that the attendees are getting way younger than they were back at uh, my first conference. But really, your question about how it's evolved, you know, the the core staples that Steve talked to in, the, in terms of content certainly remain. But when we look at the diversity of what the loss prevention community does today, both in terms of strategy and tactics, and in terms of how many attendees there are just in raw numbers, the different verticals that are represented at this conference. You know, in the old days, it used to just be department stores and specialty. Today, I think all verticals and are, are represented and with a wide array of different positions from some, um, again, back in the earlier days, it was more of the only the decision makers, the VPs, the directors. Today, the attendees have really drilled down into specialty jobs, right? So multi-unit, single unit, uh, there's probably some cyber investigators are, that are attending. So the whole complexity of the attendees ha has changed based on how our business has changed. And thus, Steve and the whole uh, content planning committee really have to drive that content to meet those, mm -hmm. those educational needs. Mm -hmm. You know, with one question outside of the topic, for both of you, if I could, that we think is important for the younger viewers. Uh, with the emergence of mobile payments, tablet POS, data breaches, identity theft, and just all of the cyber crime and, and that's impacting retail right now, how do you see that impacting the future profile of the successful senior LP executive? Um, I think it really changes that profile in terms of their, um, their complexity to the business, their, their place in the business and it changes what they need to do in terms of their own skill development. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the successful loss prevention person in the future is going to be somebody who is already inquisitive, that's how they got into the loss prevention business, but they're going to have to have a thirst for lifelong learning, the jobs changing, um, what it is today certainly will be different in a month, mm -hmm. if not sooner. So while there are going to have to be different avenues for those folks to learn, mm -hmm. that profile is really going to have to be somebody who's multidimensional, has a thirst for lifelong learning, um, and on the softer skill set side, really has to understand um, the interpersonal relationships, how to be collaborative, mm -hmm. how to work cross-functionally. Mm -hmm. You know, the old days of managing up and making sure you manage your boss, well, that's one part. Now you have to work side to side. How do mm -hmm. I work with maybe not the CIO at a mid-level job, but with a database manager or the security manager or mm -hmm. the cyber manager? So how do you work cross-functionally? So. I think there's going to be, have to be some additional skill set development in how to do that, how mm -hmm. to build those relationships. Um, we like to talk about being collaborative and having strong law enforcement partnerships. There's a real skill set to how to do that. You know, this is a networking event and not all of us network the same way. So networking, soft skills, uh, those kind of development uh, tools mm -hmm. will then put them in the position to grow, be leaders, and then at the, at the C-suite be able to work uh, cross-functionally as well. Mm -hmm. And do you, with the NRF's changing or rebranding of the conference to NRF Protect, that's a significant milestone in the industry. It sends an unbelievable message to everyone in North America, if not the world, 
and, and that really plays into what you're talking about. And, and how do you see the IT security world and the LP world playing together? Um, I think today it's a necessity that those two roles start to work together and be collaborative and work. Mm -hmm. um, in the future, uh, I think there's definitely going to be a blurring of the lines. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, I think the challenge is going to be how do those two disciplines work together, and it'll be less sort of silo-based like it is in many organizations today, to really be um, a true unit that has to work together. Mm -hmm. um, certainly my, myself and colleagues I talk to, the, the CEOs and, and, and the board members, the cyber and those risks that are there today are absolutely top of mind. And I know within my organization, I'm the first person they come to asking questions. So mm -hmm. whether it's not that I have to have the technical expertise necessarily, but right. it's how do I work together with, with those, those functions. So I think it's going to become far more important in the future. But you made a comment. You're the first person they call. I am. That's right. Huge comment. That's right. Can yeah. you elaborate? Yeah, and, and, and that is, that's key because when it comes to any type of issue, mm -hmm. where do they go? Mm -hmm. They come to us for not only the information, but direction on where to go. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, it's very important that uh, the LP professional nowadays just cross-references every other department within not only just IT, mm -hmm. HR, you know, supply chain, all of those things, just dig, dig mm -hmm. into it uh, so that you have that well-rounded background. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you have to be well-educated um, well in those areas to make sure that you're able to, uh, uh, you know, direct yourself towards those things. Well, thanks guys. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that's it for this episode, and we hope you learned a little bit about the NRF conference. And once again, we'd like to thank Steve and Gary for taking the time. Thanks for watching, and let's keep them all safe out there. Mm -hmm.